Now, a recently announced media rights sponsorship deal that has been secured by Star Times for the Ghana Premier League is said to be something that will uh, be very beneficial to clubs. This is according to the Ghana Football Association's president. Now, uh, Joy Sports Benedict Ousu spoke to uh, the president at the uh, ordinary congress of the Ghana Football Association held yesterday at the Ghanaman Soccer Center of Excellence. He's got details in the following report. The Congress began with an address from the Football Association President Christian Antichi. Among other things he said, it looks like congressmen were so much interested in the Star Times sponsorship deal. Lots of questions came through from monies to those that brokered the deal to the best of coverage they look forward to having. Nyantichi took time to address some of the issues. The sponsorship amount for Star Times, which is $17.9 million over 10 years, it's not equivalent to $1.7 million a year. Yeah. That is not the agreement we reached. For the first three years, we'll be getting $1,250,000. For the next three years, we'll be getting $1,800,000. And for the next four years, we'll be getting $2,200,000. Uh, that is how it's been, it's been progressive. The reason is that uh, although the dollar will suffer insignificant depreciation over the period, we wanted to take care of any uneventuality like uh, inflation over the period. So we did it to take care of that, and also cost of living and cost of running our, our clubs. But the sponsorship from Star Times is not a total sponsorship of all the products that have been labeled under it. This is just for broadcasts, right. uh, media activities. We have the opportunity to attract other category sponsors. We are here to have title sponsor for the league. For Division One, we have one. For women's football, we don't have a title sponsor. And all these people are at liberty to come on board. In addition to that, we can have category sponsors, airline sponsor, uh, moto, uh, whatever, vehicle sponsor, 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 brewery sponsor, telecommunication sponsor, and so forth and so on. So the door is not shut to other sponsors from coming on board. Most people were waiting to hear the FA president announce the start date for the new Ghana Premier League season. But Mr. Nyantichi noted the executive committee are yet to take a decision on that. A definite date, I can't confirm now. We have another extraordinary congress, but the season will start next year. There are two propositions, either to start in January or to start after the Nations Cup in March. Mm. We will consider that and take a decision before the end of the year. Mm. Youth and Sports Minister Neil Antivandapoy couldn't attend the Congress, one which looks like his last as sector minister. In his absence, Chief Director of the Ministry, Frank Quist, read a speech on his behalf where he praised the Ghana FA for developing women's football. He also urged the association to look for sponsorship for the various national teams as well as advising the Premier League clubs to also look for their sponsorship. In terms of amendments to their regulations and statutes, the FA, this time, did not amend any of their rules. Well, that was a report by Joy Sports Benedict Owusu. Now, let's also take the thoughts of um, some major stakeholders and some of the clubs. Now, Adriana Star CEO, Albert Kome, has also been sharing his thoughts about yesterday's Congress. Uh, when you do a lot of work behind the scene and you come to Congress, people seem to understand you and they will not waste too much time on issues. I also uh, thought that um, there were not too much controversial issues for people to engage in um, arguments, some of them that sometimes it goes to the extreme. I am very happy that we close early because people come from afar and sometimes going deep down in the night also is worrying. So it's a, pos a positive de development for us. After the president's remarks, most of the questions that were asked were on the Star Times deal. Were you surprised it came like that? I was rather happy. I was very, very happy because uh, uh, the Star Time is a, a positive development for football. Because when you have a TV sponsor, it tells the uh, sponsors that they might have good mileage when they come on board. It also gives the game to the doorstep of ordinary supporter. But when you look at the deal that the Star Time is giving to us, I think that it is very, very good. And there's the need for education for everybody to understand. Let's now talk about uh, Dreams FC, who have been relegated to uh, Division 1 following uh, a loss in that case where 
uh, they were, you know, a, a protest was lodged against them for the use of an unqualified player uh, by Tema Youth Football Club. Now, Dreams FC, uh, following that relegation to Division 1, say they will make the most out of playing in the second tier of Ghana football. Lots of reactions have come in after Dreams FC decided to comply with the appeals committee's ruling on their case against Tema Youth. Dreams FC have been demoted to the second tier league for fielding an unqualified player in a Division 1 game against Tema Youth two seasons ago. The club released a statement on Monday stating they won't contest the decision of the reconstituted appeals committee of the Ghana Football Association. And will the club's demotion to Division 1 affect them in any way? Here is administrative manager of Dreams FC, Aminu Shadow. What if we had gotten relegated to? We still have to play in the lower division. There are big, big clubs all around the world who have tasted one way or the other situations such as of which we find ourselves in. Ours is to just keep ourselves motivated. Of course, we know as management we have a lot of work ahead of us in psyching our boys and letting them know they are as good as any other player in the Premier League. If really, indeed, they are that good, they should go and show it in Division 1. And then if they are able to do that, we have no doubt at all that we will find ourselves back to where we belong. Players you signed came in, they knew they were coming to play in the Premier League. Now they would have to endure this and go to Division 1. Have you psyched them up and are they ready to do it? That's why I admitted to you that management have a lot of work to do in, in trying to get our players psyched up. I don't see it as a problem. I rather see it as an opportunity. It's an opportunity for us, for our players, especially the young ones that we are promoting to our team, to develop uh, themselves so that hopefully by next season, if all things being equal, then by the grace of God, we are able to find ourselves back into the top flight. We we'll would we'll, we'll, we'll even be better prepared to even face the demands of Premier League football. We know we do. We, we know we, 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 we belong in the in the tough light. We know very well that we belong there. We just have to go and show it and work hard and come to where we belong. Meanwhile, Chief Executive Officer of Vijana Stars, Abed Komi, has commended the management of Jim's FC for accepting the verdict of the Appeals Committee. It's not an easy decision they've made. They've shown maturity and deep down my heart I've respected them. Because he and his team have to sit and go through this a difficult time and they've accepted it. They've shown love for football. They've shown that they, they, they are capable of making sure that they help Ghana football to go forward. It might look as if uh, they are defeated, but for me, it's a win-win situation. And um, if people can comply with our laws, no matter how difficult it is, we'll go forward. That was a report by Joy Sports Asari Bediako there. Let's uh, focus some more on the clubs and go to the camp of Accra Hearts of Oak, whose uh, managing director, Vincent Soaldote, is now a member of parliament elect for the Ladadi Kotopon constituency here in the greater Accra region of Ghana. Now, Frank Nelson in Wokolo, who is a board member of the club, has been congratulating uh, Vincent Soaldote on this feat. From my acting general manager, Mr. Vincent Soaldote, if, uh, if you like, I put Honorable Vincent Soaldote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an honorable now, so I'm sure he's very happy where he is, just like we are happy with him. I mean, he's somebody that I've known for years, and I think this is a position he's been fighting for in life. I mean, he's made up his mind that this is one to speak for the lap people that he wants to. And I'm happy that at the end of the day, God was able to grant his heart request. But looking at that, I think for us in Accra, Suffolk, we're equally happy because he got this position. Uh, yes, uh, by status or by regulation or by constitution or everything, I'm sure that he will be a little bit far from the day-to-day -day running of the club because of his assignment with the uh, parliament. But I'm sure he's going to remain a board member of Accra, so hope he still contribute to the running of the clubs if he has time. But at the end of the day, we are happy that he won the seat. And Accra, so folk, we are moving forward. We we'll sign players. We're still signing players. Doors are not closed. We we'll still leave our doors open for players who think that could make a difference in the team, especially in striking and midfields. We have recruited enough players that we think that they have what it takes to be able to support our class work for the coming season and they uh, we're working with them the coach uh, assistant coach willing team is there working with them and we'll make sure that at the end of the day we'll package them to be able to bring happiness to the full super class of all right so uh, let's uh, now switch to some players uh, Ghanaian players who are uh, you know playing their trade abroad 
Now, we focus the attention on Chicago Fire's uh, David Akam, who's been speaking about his performance in the last season of the Major League Soccer uh, in the U.S. Now, he spoke to Joy Sports, Benedict Ozu. I give myself like six. Uh, I, know, I, know that, I know my abilities. I know what I can do. And even though I think I did better than I did last year, I could have done better. So I could have done much more, more than I did. So I give myself six over ten. You played very well. But same cannot be said about your club. You finished last part one. What was the problem? Uh, I think the problem was huge. It wasn't just the players or the result. It was. It consists of things that is beyond our our power. And and for me, we have we have a lot of good players, young players coming in. We play well, but we still don't get a result. So, it's. I think it's much more than us, the players. It's more about the club. Itself, and and I think the the technical team have identified the problem, and hopefully they can solve it. How worried were you that week in week out you were scoring? Yes, still we are not grinding results. Yeah, I was I was really frustrated because uh, if you do well and you don't win, it's it's like kind of pointless. And and for me, I wanted I wanted to win games, but I wasn't winning, so I was really frustrated. Mm. You're the best person to answer this question because you've been in the MLS for some time and m many people do say that the MLS is, is a league for old men, in quotes, for players that want to retire, they just make their way there, play as luxury because of the intensity is not as big or uh, as huge as the English Premier League or the Italian Serie or the, even the Bundesliga, Spanish La Liga. After tasting it for some time now, what would you say to those that have this notion? Yeah, I would say even before I went there, I had I had a perception about about the league. But when you get in, it's it's much more different. Uh, there's so much to this league: the traveling, the uh, altitude. You can play like hot in it. in this city. You go to another city, and it's very cold. A lot of traveling in the league, and to be fair, we have a lot of young players as well in the league who are doing really well. Mm. Example is Jovinko. You can't tell me Jovinko is not good enough. He's he's good and he's playing really well. And yeah, it's, it's different when you are outside watching the league. You can have your own perceptions, but when I go in, it's for me, it's different perceptions about the league. It's it's good. The league is getting better, and and I, I would say it's, it's it will catch up soon with with some of the top leagues in, in Europe. Am I right to say that playing in the MLS is very difficult in terms of the traveling because it's United States of America, not like Ghana. You can just uh, if you're going to Kumasi, it's just a short trip. Now, if let's say you're from Chicago to a different state, that will take you some hours. So it must be very difficult playing in the MLS. Yeah, I think it's much different co uh, considering all these uh, factors. Uh, different weather, different uh, time zones. Yeah, time zone is one as well because you can travel to uh, maybe LA and they are like two hours back. And for me, it makes a huge difference on the player. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, with a lot of things, uh, considering uh, uh, the distance to travel also is, makes it uh, much more difficult to... Is there a place you would want to stay? Uh, at the moment, I still have contract with my club, and, and it's, I think the league is getting better every year, so why not? If, if I still have the chance, I, I will still play in the MLS. But should something come up, maybe you get good deal outside or probably maybe you feel you've played in the MLS for some time and you want a new challenge, would you embrace that? Yeah, I think so. At the moment, I'm still considering other other things. I wouldn't say offer other things. And and I don't want to show disrespect to my club because I have a contract with them. And no matter what, I have to handle the club. I have, I have to handle the offer. So, but at the moment, if something good comes up and and I'll sit down with the club and we'll see what's best for both of us. All right, so uh, let's uh, continue to talk some more about the uh, African Footballer of the Year Award. And of course, uh, the one, uh, the version of the BBC, of course, and uh, Leicester City's Riyad Mahrez uh, won the Player of the Year Award. Remember, he beat uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, Ghana's Andre Ayew, Sadio Mane, and of course, Yaya Toure to win the coveted crown. Mm -hmm.